Hello Internet, it's Ian here and this video is a sequel to a previous video that I've done which was all about getting a table out of a Wikipedia page. In that video I promised to show you how to figure out the index of a table on a Wikipedia page using a little bit of web nerdery using the, uh, the web inspector or the uh, you know, developer tools and uh, this is that video. So if that sounds like something that floats your boat, keep watching. Okay, I'm on Wikipedia. This is the example that I used last time, a list of chemical elements. So if I go down here, now I'm just using the Brave browser, but you can pretty much use any browser, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, whatever. They've all got this amazing feature called the Web Inspector. So I'll go to the View menu, go down to Developer, Developer Tools, and up comes this. Now, yours might not look exactly like this, but they all do pretty much the same thing. It lets you uh, interrogate the structure of the page and sort of mess with it and do fun things. So I don't have the console up at the moment. Uh, I can click the console here. With this console, I can type in uh, commands and ask the web page about what's going on. What's going on, web page? I'm going to type in document and then query selector all that means i want to type in a selector and have the web page tell me what the answer is or, or what the solution is to that selector what set what elements match it and this instance it's super simple it's just table so as you can see we have um, document dot query selector all and the capitalization is important and then bracket quote table quote closing bracket it's already given me a preview of what that matches. There are 25 elements. When I press return, it gives me a list of all of those. You can see there's a triangle there. If I flip that open, I can see the individual elements. And if I, if you hover over them with your mouse, you can see over on the web page itself, there are a little kind of um, updating uh, as it highlights each one in turn. And eventually I get to this one and it highlights the table that we're interested in. Its index is 12, but we need to add one to that because uh, it's, uh, JavaScript starts indexing at zero. So when we plug that into Google Sheets, we need to tell it that we want table 13, not 12, just a little quirk to be aware of. So now that we know it is table 12, we want the URL of this page as well. I've already typed it in here. Coming back to this page, if I type equals to put it into formula mode and then import HTML, press tab. For the URL, I can just refer to A1 because I've already put that in. We're interested in the table on that page and we said it was number 13. I don't even need to close the parenthesis because Google Sheets is smart enough to know that I would like to close it anyway. Press return and it goes away, asks Wikipedia for that element on that page and puts it in then I can just go ahead and select one column if I like. Now I've also set up for another demo in this instance we have a list of New Zealand films which is also on Wikipedia we were interested in say films from the let's go for the 1970s all right 1970s films from New Zealand and similar kind of things so I'm going to go over to the uh, console here I will clear the console by clicking this little button here or typing command K or control L I'll just click that one and similar kind of thing I'll type in document and hit a tab so that finishes that word for me query and then I can use up and down to get to query select all tab and again I'm interested in the table element press return and I'll flip that open and as I move over those tables, eventually that one lights up. So I know, adding one again, it is table number eight that we're interested in because we've added one to get around the zero indexing. So if I go over here and then into, there's my URL already typed in because I'm that organized, type in and put HTML URL referring to A1 again. Or if you wanted to, just to show you how it would work, I'm going to copy the URL from that page itself and I'll paste it in there in quotes the query again it's table I've already forgotten what the number was let's go back and check it out 
it was eight. Thank you for bearing with me. So we plug in nine, and then that should be films from the 1970s. Why did that not work? Let's check out. So I said 1970s. Eight. This is live. This is pretty much. Oh, yeah, it was eight. Okay, cool. We'll just leave that in there. So, just to show you that sometimes there is trial and error because we are human, we make mistakes. But there you go. It's uh, all of the films from New Zealand in the 1970s, just like we thought. One more little caveat sometimes what you're interested in in Wikipedia is not a table element. So, here's another page. This is fourth generation programming language on Wikipedia, which is, you know, sort of geeky well sort of geeky it's very geeky so in this instance this isn't a table element if i uh move over this i'm gonna i'm just gonna use another little trick here uh, if i go to developer and inspect elements then i can hover over different elements here and it'll highlight them in the web inspector i click on one there then i can see that this is not a table it is an unordered list so ul stands for unordered list so in this instance, imagine that I was curious about getting all of that list out of Wikipedia. Then I'll do the same thing, document, query, select all. But this time, instead of a table tag, I want a UL, unordered list tag. I can see immediately that there are 36 there. If I press return and then flip that open, and I'll just move my cursor. We got there pretty quickly. So that is unordered list, um, and we want that one. So that would be number five. I'll try and remember it this time. Uh, go in here and this time go import HTML A1 because I've already typed in the URL up there. And instead of a table, I want a list. And it was number five. So if all goes well, there we go. Accelerator, etc. And just make sure that's the same thing. There you go. So there's a way to get the list. And of course, you might think it's pretty easy to just copy and paste it from that page, but then it's um, then that data is frozen in time, if you like, whereas if you do it like this, then it will query the page and presumably be up to date every time you load your Google spreadsheet. I hope that makes sense. I know that was maybe a little esoteric, um, but it does show off a use of the web inspector and Hopefully it will prove useful to someone out there. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.